when Brother Stapleton asked for prayer request, I would like to think that we all would have something on our heart, whether we speak it or not. And I know this song is written as such that you pray for me, but you take that as you're saying it, because we all need prayers, no matter what it is. And I know this is um, a familiar song, but maybe today it'll meet a certain need in your life.
we really need to pray together that God would, would, would help us in this time of need. I've been praying and, and studying all week and preparing a, a message for today. And in fact, I was up early this morning, as I usually am uh, on Sundays, just, you know, re, re-studying, refreshing my study. I, I want to try to be as prepared as I possibly can be. And I don't really like it when the Lord changes directions on me this close to um, the service. Um, but as I finished my, my meditation this morning, it was still early, and, 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 and this, this other message just came to me in just a few moments' time. And uh, I need your prayers today. Um, and I want you to mention me as you pray right now. Uh, just one verse of Scripture found in Romans chapter 5, verse 6. The Apostle Paul writing here to the the saints at Rome in Miss Bonnie Webb's memorial service. We have our idea of what sainthood is. But I want you to know down here Sainthood is just simply sinners saved by grace. Now, I don't feel very saintly. And sainthood here is not sinless perfection. We're waiting for that benefit of our faith in the Lord, and it's going to come. Wow, what a wonderful thing it's going to be when we're finally delivered from the effects of and the bondage of and the power of sin in our life. Amen. And we'll truly be saintly then. But Paul was writing to the saints in Rome and he says here in Romans chapter 5 verse 6, for when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Think about that for a moment. When we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. My thought for just a few moments today, God helping me, is I can't, but He can. I can't, but he can. Many years ago, I hadn't been in Huntington long. We were having Bible studies here at the church. Um, on Monday evening, preachers would gather together and deacons would gather together. Um, Brother Larry Johnson, a deacon uh, from New Liberty Church, lived up at Trenton. He would drive from Trenton and come to those Bible studies and one night, I'll never forget him telling this story, and I've told it here, and it, it, it really speaks to me. He told a story about a teacher at the beginning of school. Some of you school teachers will get this. At the beginning of school, the teacher wrote on the blackboard, kids, that's what they used to have. They used to have blackboards. You write on them with chalk. You know, I, some of you don't have a clue what that is. Um, but the teacher wrote on the blackboard all the rules for the classroom. And he told his students, he said, now these are the rules, and if you'll keep the rules, we'll all get along fine. Well, little Johnny put a frog in little Susie's lunchbox. And when she opened the lunchbox, it jumped out and scared her to death. And the teacher asked little Johnny, why'd you do that? And he said, well, there wasn't any rule against it. And so the teacher went back to the chalkboard and erased all the, all the rules and he wrote on the chalkboard, do right. Do right. 
Think what this world would be like if we all just did right. But that's the problem, isn't it? We can't do right. There's not a one of us in this room, myself included, and I'm speaking as much to me as I am to you. There's not a one of us in this room that can do right. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. Yes, we have, we have the ability to make good choices. And we should. And we do. But we don't always do right, do we? No. We don't always do right. I remember my grandmother telling me, and uh, this goes back to a time when, when Christian people really thought, you know, uh, drinking alcohol was a sin. We've, we've, come, we've come far from that conviction these days. But my grandmother said, you know, if someone knocked on our door and, and we opened the door and there they stood with a bottle of liquor or a six pack of beer, we wouldn't invite them to come into our home. But we turn our television on and we invite them to come on in Amen. with their drinking and with their cursing and with their swearing and, and taking God's name in vain. And, and, and we don't do right, do we? That's right. We don't do right by ourselves and we don't do right by God. And guilty with my hands up. Therein lies the problem is we don't do right. And folks, I can't do right. But he can. Amen. Our Lord and Savior can. You know, Paul testified in Philippians 4 and 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's absolutely the truth. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going to tell this. I hope he doesn't get mad at me. But Mark told me before service was over. He said, I really can't speak well. Don't re I'm not comfortable with that. But I thought he did a pretty good job, didn't you? Amen. I've got a feeling that the Lord was right there with him. I, and I remember Miss Louise Dickerson, I explained to her, uh, she and her husband, Eugene, wanted to know, what do you have to do to become a member here? I said, well, you, for one thing, you have to tell us that you've been saved. Miss Dickerson said, oh, I can't do that. She said, I've been saved, but I can't stand in front of the church and do that. I said, Miss Dickerson, just keep on coming to church and l just let the Lord take care of it. Yeah, you know, I don't know how much time elapsed, but finally one morning she came to church. She said, I'm ready, Brother Stapleton. She came right down the aisle, stood here and gave a wonderful testimony of being saved. She couldn't, but, but the Lord could. And gave her grace and, and courage and faith uh, and the ability to do that. Folks, listen, I couldn't tell you my name today if it weren't for God's grace. Amen. I was praying that the Lord would deliver me from some terrible sin in my life. And he answered that prayer by saying, Lynn, you've got to preach. I said, no, Lord, that's not what I want. I want this. And he says, no, you've got to have this. If you want that, you've got to have this. And I'm telling you today, the Lord, just like taking a floppy disk out of, out of a computer, the Lord took that sin out of my life. I've never had a problem with it since, but I had to answer the call to preach first. And I can't do this without the Lord. But the Lord can. And, and he can help us with whatever it is that we have to do in our life. We can, folks, do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Paul telling us here that, that when we were yet without strength, when we were sinners 
In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He wrote in, in, in uh, Galatians, he, he said, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem us who are under the curse of the law. And that's where every last one of us is. We are under the curse of the law. And that's why we can't do right. We, we try Paul, Paul said he tried, but he described the law. He said the law is our schoolmaster. You know, God gave Adam and Eve one law. They couldn't keep that one. How are we going to keep those 613 in the Old Testament, much less the ones in the New Testament? If Adam couldn't keep one, how are we going to keep all of those? You see, we just can't do right, but he can. Yeah, praise the Lord. He can. Paul said, you know, when I would do good, evil is present with me. And he said, the good that I want to do, that I would do, I don't do. But he said, the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I do. And then he, in this, in this unbelievable plea, he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And you see, he just got through describing the law because of the law of God. God's law to Adam was, if you eat of the fruit of this tree, you will die. And he did die spiritually. He was separated from God. And he knew it. And he was no longer comfortable being in God's presence because he knew that he was a sinner. And when he heard God's voice, so familiar to him, he ran and hid in the bushes of the garden. They tried to cover their nakedness with fig leaves. They weren't too comfortable. And friend, you won't find anything in this world that's comfortable to wear in the presence of Almighty God except that robe of righteousness Amen. which Jesus Christ came here to give to them that would believe and trust in his name. Amen. I wanted to be saved. I really wanted to be saved. Mom and dad raised me and taught me about the Lord. They taught me to believe in God and to believe in Jesus Christ. And I did. But when, when, when the commandment came, it's just like Paul said, when the commandment came, sin revived, it came alive in me, and, and I was dead in trespasses and sins, and I knew that I was separated from God, and I wanted to be saved. I really wanted to be saved. I wanted Jesus in my life, but I couldn't do it. I was seeking the Lord. And I really wanted to be saved, but I couldn't save myself. Friend, I couldn't reach the Lord. Try as I may, I wanted to be saved, but I could not reach the Lord. Uh, you know, I came here, I'd never heard this song before, Chris. The, the, the Victory Quartet sings a song, he reached further down than I could reach up. You know, and, and sitting here, it's a long way from here to that altar. It really, really is. And you can't get there. You know, this week, I, 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 last, a couple of weeks ago, I told about my uncle coming down the aisle, said he would never go to the altar. And he came down the aisle, though, in a revival meeting. He never made it to the altar. He fell in the floor and got saved. My uncle Dale died and went to heaven just last week. Amen. Amen. But I was sitting in the church house when Uncle Dale got saved. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen in my life. But Uncle Dale couldn't reach the Lord, but I'm thankful that the Lord could reach him. Amen. And folks, we can't, we can't do right any more than we can be good. That's right. And we can't be good any more than we can live a sinless life. And we can't reach heaven any more than, than, than we can do that. We can't save ourselves. We can't get to heaven. But guess what? Jesus Christ came here. He came here and became just like us. He became a man. I mean, he put on flesh and blood. A body was prepared for him. A virgin born body that was free of sin. And Jesus Christ, God's son, lived in this sinful place and did right everywhere he went. And the world hated him. 
because they saw the good that was in him and it convicted them of the evil that was in them and they saw in him what they could not do. But Jesus Christ lived that sinless life and he went to the cross of Calvary and paid our debt for sin that we can't do. Amen. You don't have a thing. You don't have a thing worth having that God already doesn't have. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough good looks. You don't have enough intelligence. You don't have enough good works. There's just absolutely nothing. But Jesus Christ has it all. Amen. And he came here. And when we, when we were without strength, in due time, in the right time, Jesus Christ died for the ungodly. Praise the Lord, he did. You know, in the Old Testament, Israel couldn't deliver themselves from the bondage that they were in. They were held captive 400 years. I don't know how long they worked the clay pits making bricks, but they couldn't save themselves. They couldn't save themselves from Pharaoh's army. They couldn't find water in the desert. They couldn't feed themselves, and they couldn't enter into the promised land, but God could. Amen. And, and, and every time that, that they had a need, you know, God heard them pray. pray. They couldn't reach heaven uh, on their own, but they could call out to God. And God told Moses, I've heard their cry. And he delivered them. He rescued them from that awful slavery. And when they stood there at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was pursuing them, God opened up the Red Sea and made a way for them to go through on dry land. They didn't have the power to do that, but God did. They couldn't do that, but God can. Praise the Lord. And when they, were, when they were dying of thirst in the wilderness, God brought water out of a rock and he rained food down from heaven. Uh, uh, manna. They call, what is this? What is this? It's manna. It's food from heaven. It's exactly what we need to stay alive. The, the, their, their shoes didn't wear out. Their clothes didn't wear out. And God led them all the way to the promised land. Right. And he made a way for them to go in. Hallelujah. I can't be good. I can't live a sinless life. I can't reach heaven. I can't live. I can't move. I can't breathe. But he can. He can. Brother Smith, there's a few of us around this room who belong to that zipper club, you know. We've had heart surgery. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for it. You know, the, the doctors, the doctors, I mean, they can crack us open. They can get in there and, and fool around and, and, and fix the veins and everything, but they can't make that heart beat. But God can. God can. In him, Paul said, we live and we move and we have our being. Praise the Lord. I can't sing. Y'all know that. I can't pray. I can't preach. But he can. Amen. But he can. And he gives grace. Grace. Marvelous grace. To everyone that will just trust in him. When we were without strength. That's why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation for therein is the righteousness revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And, and, and lost friend, children, listen, listen. You can't get to God on your own. You know, the, the, the wonderful service that we had here last week Brothers and sisters, we can't duplicate that. 
as much as that's what we would like to experience today. We cannot duplicate that. If God doesn't open the windows of heaven and pour out his blessings upon us, we're, we're helpless, we're hopeless, and we'll go home in the same shape that we came in the first place unless God chooses to bless with that wonderful presence of his Holy Spirit. And you're lost, uh, children, without God, and you cannot be saved unless God opens up the doors of mercy and makes a way for you to come to him. I've heard people testify over and over that, that, that you know, just, just taking one step of faith was, was all it took, you know, and, and, and even at that, to take that first step of faith, it takes grace and power from Almighty God to bring that about. And if you'll trust the Lord, if you'll trust the Lord just to Come to him. He will save your soul. You may not have to come to this altar. You could be saved right where you're at. But you will have to make an altar somewhere. And ask God to save your soul. And even then, you can't do that without the help of Almighty God. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9, and 10 is so plain. For by grace, unmerited favor, undeserved goodness from God, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that, that what? That faith. That faith is not of yourselves. You don't have enough faith in here. You just simply don't. God gives us the faith. Amen. By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Faith is a gift of God's grace. It's the gift of God. It's not of works. It doesn't come from us. It's not of works lest any man should boast. But we are his workmanship. His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. Now, just like the teacher, God wants us to do right. right. We just don't simply have the power. And even having been saved by his marvelous grace, we still don't have the power apart from the Lord's help to do right. right. But with his help day by day, Paul said, I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And one of these days, folks, one of these days, we will reach that sinless sainthood in heaven that's going to be wonderful. Amen. Down here, we're going to struggle, but we're challenged as believers to fight the good fight of faith. Is it a struggle for you? It is for me. And lost friend, today, this, this, this is it. You don't have the ability to save yourself. You can't be good enough. You can't do enough good works. You just simply can't. You can't do it, but he can. Amen. You know, preaching has scared me to death my whole life. And it's just as scary today as it was the, the first time I ever stood for the Lord. It is. Because I know I couldn't stand up here and tell you my name without the Lord helping me. But I've learned through the years a little bit to trust in him. Amen. And I know that he's able to deliver in, in, in the worst of circumstances possible. You know, when, when, when everything just doesn't fall in place, his grace is still sufficient for us. Amen. And lost friend, you can be saved today. You can be saved today if you'll just trust him now. Trust him now. Isn't that what you want? Yeah. To, to be saved, to have peace in your heart, 
to have that assurance of knowing that when this life is over, that you have a home waiting for you in heaven. That's what Jesus came to do. That's exactly why he came here. He came and he took upon himself this body. He lived the life we couldn't live. He kept the law we couldn't keep. He did the, the good and the right that we didn't and can't do. He went to the cross and carried our sins and nailed them, nailed them to the cross. And he died the death. He died the death that we should die so that we don't have to. Because he died for us, we don't have to. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. He became like us so that we could become like him. Sinless, spotless, holy, righteous, good, loving, caring, compassionate people that do right, that do right. That's what we all want. Mary Moody sings a song. I know a man who can. I know a man who can. Miss Mary's had trouble with her voice. I've had trouble with mine. Singing's a struggle. Preaching's a struggle. Life is a struggle. Doing right is a struggle. That's why we need Jesus. And lost friend, you won't ever find a better time, a better time than right now to give your heart and life to the Lord. Recognize your weakness, but trust in his power. That's the only way you're going to get to heaven. Paul said, we don't have to go to heaven and bring the Lord down. He's already come here. We don't have to go across the sea. We don't have to, have to do anything. We just have to trust in him. And he's not very far from any one of us. Amen. And right now by faith, you can reach out to him and ask him to save your soul. And he promises eternal life to everyone that would believe. I can't, but he can. You can't, but I promise you, he can. And better still, I promise you, he will. Because he said he will. Adam, if you've got a song, come and lead us in a song. And I would invite anybody today, if you're troubled in your heart, troubled in your soul, you don't have that peace in, you, in your heart and soul of knowing that you've been saved by his marvelous grace. I encourage you right now to seek him with all your heart. Before you leave this meeting house today, you can know in your heart that you've been saved and you can walk away from here with the most wonderful peace you've ever known in your life. If you'll just say, yes, Lord, that's what I want. Adam, let's sing. Number 203 in the blue book.